What's up, people? It's your girl, Adiola. So, guys, what do you think about Ethiopia banning visa upon arrival for Nigerians? Ethiopians, what did we do to you? Actually, guys, let me give you the details. On October 4th, the Ethiopian government announced that they are banning visa upon arrival, but it's not just for Nigerians. It's more than 40 countries. And keep in mind that this does not affect you if you're transiting through Ethiopia. So long as you don't leave the airport when you fly through Ethiopia, you're good. You don't need a visa. And this is with immediate effect. So now you need a visa before you can visit Ethiopia. And they are saying that it's because of security concerns and the ongoing war in the northern part of the country. They also said that it's temporary, so they may reverse this ban at any time. Some people have been circulating that, oh, it's because some Nigerians misbehaved in Ethiopia. Some people say that Nigerians are rude when they get to the airport in Ethiopia. But the truth of the matter is the, the government did not say anything like that. They said it's for security concerns. So having said that, though, Nigerians, please, wherever we are, our actions affect not just us, but every other person with the Nigerian passport. So let's continue to be well behaved. I mean, look at what's happening in Dubai, how they recently tightened up their visa requirement for Nigerians. But before we crucify Ethiopia, I think we should actually appreciate Ethiopia because in 2018, they actually opened their borders to all members of the African Union to come into their country to get a visa upon arrival. So I think Ethiopia actually tried. But I'd like to hear not just from Nigerians about this new development, but from Ethiopians as well. What do you guys think about your government burning more than 40 countries, you know, from getting visa upon arrival? I'd like to know what you guys think about this. So guys, i like to leave you with this headline, which I'm sure many of you must have seen. But the NNPC, the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, has discovered an illegal pipeline that has been used to steal oil, not just for a few days or weeks, but guess what, for nine solid years. Just three days ago, Mr. Chairman, we found a connection by the help of these private contractors that were put in place. Running four kilometers from our major trunk, trunk Focados line, into the sea, four kilometers into the sea, and with a loading port that has probably operated in the last nine years, Mr. Chairman. And if this is just one, I do not know how many more are there, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so first of all, people are asking, how do we even know that it's only for nine <laughs> years? Second of all, if it took them nine years to discover one illegal pipeline, isn't there a possibility that there may be several other illegal pipelines? Like, <laughs> ah, Jesus. I just want to know what you guys think about this headline. Nine years to, to discover an illegal pipeline. Is it that they were not keeping account of how much oil they were producing before nine years ago that it suddenly dropped with a new, I mean, a pipeline? It's like somebody attached hose to your source of oil and they're diverting your oil. How would you not know that somebody is diverting oil through a pipeline? It's not as if they're using bucket. Ah, I better roll on now. NMPC. You guys, <laughs> let me know what you guys think about this. You guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it roll. Moving on to South Africa, guys. The former president, Jacob Zuma, is once again a free man after he was incarcerated for 15 months. <laughs> <laughs> The former president had been accused of corruption and he failed to show up at the inquiry into his corruption charges. And so because of that, he was sentenced to 15 months in prison. And because he was sentenced, a riot broke out. People were vandalizing stores. A lot of people were killed. So many properties were destroyed because people were protesting that how dare they imprison their former president. But guess what happened when he was released? It was like they threw a party for him. There was fireworks, they were popping champagne. Like what? this i mean the man was accused of corruption he went to prison but then when he came out you know some people were celebrating i want to know what you guys think about this south africans let us hear from you guys i mean some people love him some people don't we would love to hear from you guys if you're not from south africa do you think that something like this could happen in your country for a former president to be sentenced to prison in your country you guys know i don't know much guess what i'm just keeping it real 
So, shout out to everyone that showed some love to the Akara guys that I featured in my last video, especially Justice Onehi of Benue State. Thank you so much, everybody. I really appreciate you guys. He called me that some of you reached out to him to see how you could help him. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. May God bless every one of you. Now, I'm hoping that you also be inspired by my story of the day. A group of Nigerians in America called Beyond Remittance Group, BRG, is doing exactly what their name says, which is going beyond remitting money, sending money home, to literally investing in the lives of young people. Now, don't get me wrong. It is good to send money home. It's making an impact. You are making an impact. You're changing lives with the money that you send home. But I'm just featuring what this organization is doing. They literally adopted a high school in Shagamu local government area of Ogun State. It's called Shimawa High School. Among other things, they are organizing a summer coaching for the students of this school in order for them to get better in reading and writing and in mathematics and so on. In fact, they are so well organized that more than 300 people were at the launching of this summer coaching program. The commissioner of education was there, the king and queen of that community were there. So many people from the community got to see how this organization is changing the lives of their children. BRG has launched summer coaching classes in Shimawa High School in the Shagamu local government area in Ogun State. Now, more importantly, they are not just coaching the students. They're hiring more teachers for the school because the classes are overcrowded. So they need more teachers and then they need more classrooms. So they are building four new classrooms for them. They are setting up a computer center for the students. Actually, let's just hear them say the things that they are doing at the school. BRG number one priority is to reduce the class size by 50%. Three, BRG will recruit six volunteer teachers we should increase teaching learning capacity by 200%. BRG will be responsible for all the expenses for these support teachers. BRG will supply the student with course materials at the beginning of the semester. And we are working on securing broadband and technology by the beginning of the second semester. BRG will provide daily lunch for the target group. The computer lab is included in the container classroom. So we are building four classrooms in total. We are also adding two bathrooms. Wow. I mean, talk about giving back. The chief executive officer of this organization, by the way, is my very own mother. That is Antibuki Shonuga, who is based in New York City. Antibuki has been in the U.S. for at least 40 years, but she goes back and forth, always looking for how to give back. And I just want to thank her and her organization for sowing into the lives of these kids. I was really impressed by what they are doing. I thought I would talk about it on the show. They do have a GoFundMe page, and I'll post the link for those who may be interested in what they are doing. The children are already giving feedback, positive feedback. Back. This is one of the letters that the kids wrote where a student here is saying that with the training that she's getting from this coaching that she's determined more than ever to go after her dreams of becoming a medical doctor. I was like, wow, girl. You can send them an email. You can also contact Auntie Buki Shoniga via email directly from their GoFundMe page. You guys now don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it wrong. <laughs> So did you guys click the thumbs up button yet? All right, y'all, it's been real, and I'm keeping it right up in here. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you get to subscribe to my channel, I'm watching you on Plasma TV. Press the subscribe button and the bell button. Until next time, I'm going to see you all later. Peace out.